Uh, hi, good afternoon everyone. This is Rajiv Askana from immigration.com. The law is of Rajiv Askana PC. Uh, this is our bi-weekly community conference call every other Thursday. Uh, this particular conference call is painful because we were not able to get a lot of the questions posted on the forums. Uh, the forum software has been particularly buggy. We've been using this software for 15 years, never had a problem. Last update we did a few months ago has completely rendered the software unusable. So <clears throat> we are going to be uh, migrating all the data over the weekend to a new software, which we have evaluated and we've shown to people. It's uh, right now at community.immigration.com, uh, community.immigration.com. So I've only, only been able to get some questions that were posted on the old forums copied over to the new uh, on the new forums copied over to the old ones so it's there's a lot of confusion i'll do the best i can um but i i'm pretty sure that we missed out on a lot of questions some of the emails that i got i responded already so you have your answers they don't need to be dealt with um, in the community conference uh, but the questions that we have posted i'll deal with them and then if people who have logged in right now have any questions I'm sure I'll be able to answer all of them, okay? <clears throat> the four or five questions, typically we have about 20 questions um, that we like to deal with every um, posted session, and then we take new questions. <clears throat> but this time, uh, since we didn't have the forums up, we have about four or five. I'll deal with them first, and then I'll deal with new questions. And this message is from Jerrica. Uh, she is my, my Twitter buddy, and um, she's from India, getting married to an H1 holder in July planning to move in USA in August or September. The fiance wants to move there on, on H4. She doesn't like that idea. She doesn't like the idea of not being able to work. She has an MBA uh, from Singapore. She has a CA, child accountancy from India. Also an, a, an MCOM, a master's degree in commerce. So she's working as an, as an, uh, as an assistant manager in an Indian multinational. Uh, about a year and a half of experience. So questions. One, if I go to US on H4, would prospective employers even think of employing? <clears throat> yeah, you're right, the problem is with the quota. Because of the H1 quota, it is very difficult to get work easily. Fiance wants you to study and then take advantage of an OPT. She doesn't like it because she already has two master's degrees plus her child accountancy. Uh, there isn't much left for me to study. Okay, that's a good problem. After going through several possible courses from many university websites, nothing seems particularly challenging. Okay, so if my company wants me to move to USA, what kind of visa? Look into L1 visa. Look into L1 visa. Jerrica, the best thing about L1 visa is if you actually qualify for an L1A, you can actually do a favor, good big favor for yourself and your husband. You could potentially get your green card within a year. L1 you can get within a few weeks, then you move here, apply for green card within a, within a year, you should have your green card. Okay. Um, once I get my H4, in how much time do I need to enter the US? There is no time limit. If you get an H4, which is good for three years, you can enter in the last month of the third year. Okay. Um, how about the new laws that allow dependent spouses of H1 visa holders? Are they restricted to IT tech people? Well, you know, I wasn't real clear on that. I had seen the regulations briefly uh, a few weeks ago when they first came out. But this morning, I took a look at the regulations again, and they are not. The H-4 regulations, the H-4 work regulations, which are currently being considered, are not for ITAC or STEM people only. They are for anybody who meets the following qualifications. An H-4 spouse can get work authorization if one of the two, one of the two of the following are true. Number one, the... H-1 holder's green card is I-140 approved state. So if the I-140 is approved, H-4 can apply for 
work authorization. It does not have to be STEM. Second option, if the H1 holder is in the seventh year, eighth year, or ninth year of H1. That's the short, brief way of stating it. So if your husband is in seventh or eighth year of H1 or more, you can get H4, or if his I-140 is approved, you can get H4. Okay? Well, good luck, Jerrica. Next question is from Preeti. Um, working on L2 EAD for company A. She got her H1 approved by company B with change of status, but she wants to continue working with company A. If I leave USA on 30th September and come back on 29th October on L2, would I still be on L2? Yes, absolutely. That is the best thing to do. Leave one day before October 1st, come one day or whatever time after October 1st. You'll be back on L2. Um, I will not be in US from 30th September to October 29th. Can it cause any issues during green card processing? Not at all. Not at all. No worries. If you have not joined the employer, that's fine. Uh, you don't have any pay slips, that's fine. If I never join employer B and after a year or two, can I work for employer C? But well, you've got a work authorization. You can work for whoever you want. Can I work for employer C on H1 by transferring the H1 to employer C? Guys, here's here's an alert. I have always considered this to be the law, that if the H1 is approved, you will no longer be subject to the H1 quota in future. But I have seen um, some observations from USCIS that gives me some cause for concern. Recently, I saw an observation from USCIS that said, look, if your H1 is revoked before October 1st kicks in, you are not exempt from the quota. Okay, I can understand that. Although I still think it's the wrong interpretation of the law and I think it can be challenged. But they say that. But here is the more tricky part. They say, if, you, if you're outside USA and you never apply for a visa, you are not exempt from the H-1 quota. I think it's the wrong interpretation of the law. And if I get the time, I'll probably want to agitate this issue with the government and help, help them try to see the reason why this is an incorrect interpretation of the law. Okay, in my view, once an H-1 is approved, whether you change status, whether you don't change status, whether you apply for a visa, you have already been counted and that should be good enough. But I am seeing some contrary opinions. So to answer your question, I don't know. I used to be able to say quite confidently that you should be exempt from the quota. Now I'm not so sure. Okay, so let us uh, keep that on the shelf for now. Actually, let me make a note of this. There are some issues that I want to agitate with the government. One, H1 quota when counted. And two, um, okay, I'll, I'll take care of that. Um, I'll uh, make note of that. I, I hope to be able to do something about this for you guys. But right now, Preeti, I can't say that for sure. I think you should be able to be exempt from the quota, but who the heck knows anymore. Since I'll be out from the country for about a month, when I come back, do I need to renew my EAD? No, 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 no. See, Preeti, here is the difference between EAD and H1. EAD gives you the right, but not the obligation to work. You can have an EAD and never work on it. H1 doesn't allow that. L1 doesn't allow that. But EAD allows you the right to work but not the obligation to work. I hope that makes it clear. Then we uh, come to the next question from Sujata. She says, my husband and myself, who is dependent, or she is dependent, applied for I-485 in 2005. Okay, so in her case what has happened, I remember reading this message. They lost their file twice. So they delayed their case by five years because they lost their green card file twice. So her question is, can I argue that our citizenship period should begin from the day that they lost our file, not from the date of the approval? Sujata, I don't think so. I don't think so. 
um, you can try um, if you are ready to file a lawsuit what you can do is try to file a lawsuit against the government I don't think it's a it's a very easy to win lawsuit <clears throat> but the smarter approach may be to ask them to retroactively approve your green card and then apply for naturalization because naturalization is by statute five years after you've got your green card but when they can approve the green card that could be still something you could challenge so no as without a lawsuit I don't think you're going to be able to do it you can try Chetan has a question uh, he sent to Monica who then posted he's a US citizen once is in the process of applying for mom's green card I-130 is approved when he applied for the I-130 she was in the US on a tourist visa she's come come and gone multiple times when she got her green card uh, her I-130 approval she was in Antigua visiting Chetan's sister since she was out of the country the case went to NVC NVC has assigned a case number and contacted Chetan to begin the counselor processing so two weeks ago mom came back um, when she entered she was asked and she very honestly said yes I have my green card process going good excellent so the questions are one how long should I wait before contacting NVC and notifying them of my intention you know in her case she has very clearly said that a green card is going on um, I'm not even sure you need to wait but ideally if you can wait I would wait at least 70 80 days uh, there is no five week rule there is actually a 30 60 day rule but wait about 70 days or so you really don't have to inform NVC you can just file I-485 okay the law only says this when she entered USA the last time from Antigua she did not have the intention to convert to green card within the United States but if after a few weeks months she changes her intention that's fine okay and there's nothing negative about that once again the process does not necessarily involve you having to inform NVC about anything you can just file the 485 okay but just to keep things clean you can file 485 and let NVC know as well all right guys before I take new questions any follow-ups on existing questions please press star 5 on your phone any follow-up questions no new questions any follow-up questions press star 5 okay all right floor is open any new questions anybody has any questions people who are logged in right now one question only two three star five four five okay out of the, all the people attending five people have questions for me I will start taking these questions in the order that you people logged into the conference call so whoever logged in first I'll take their question first so area code 571 from the Virginia area go ahead please uh, yes sir go ahead ma'am hello yes yeah. um, hi uh, I have a uh, question uh, my company sponsored my green card and they are at the recruitment stage so I want to know if I can travel to India I've read in the forums that when your perm is being filed uh, your, it's best advisable not to travel okay what stage of green card are they at I'm there at the recruitment stage oh absolutely you can travel the only time there is some question about travel is when they are filing 485 the last step okay so uh, can I travel after my perm is filed and before it's approved absolutely absolutely you can okay, even travel so while the I-140 no is problem. pending you can even travel when the I-140 is approved and you're waiting to file 485 no problem so there's no problem to travel and doing any stages of green card right uh, only when the 45 is being filed you should check with your lawyers okay so doing home is absolutely fine absolutely fine go have a good trip 
Okay, and uh, one more question. Uh, uh, I I know I shouldn't be involved in the recruitment. But I want to as to who can interview the candidates, like someone who is on non-immigrant visa here, like L1 or H1. Can he interview the candidates here? That's a tough question to answer. Let me tell you what is clear. What is clear is okay. neither the individual from whom the, whom the green card is being filed, nor the lawyers can be involved in the recruitment. That's quite clear. Okay. I would want that person to interview who normally interviews people for hiring in the company. Okay. okay. Now the question is, what if that person is on L1 or H1? And there the answer is, it's if correct. recruitment is a part of their job description, official job description, I see no problem with it. Okay. All right. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 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 Okay. We have uh, one more raised hand. So we have about five questions more. Again, going in the order in which people logged in. Um, somebody had logged in from India. Go ahead, please. India. Go ahead. Hello. <coughs> Hello Raju, this is uh, Sai from India. Haji Sai sir. <coughs> Sorry. Actually, I have been holding an uh, H1B from my current employer in India and it is valid till next year, 2015 September. And recently I have come across an employer from USA who, had, who has agreed to file a new H1B using previous year quota. And they have filed LCA and uh, <coughs> it got approved and it's valid till uh, next year August 2015 and, uh, and now the employer says that because of some client um, commitments he is not willing to hire me so he said uh, they cannot take you on roles so I just want to know as the employer XY I mean the current employer has filed the I mean sorry for this uh, as the new employer has filed the I-797 I LCA right so does that automatically avoid my existing employer petition and ESA stamp? Okay, so let me rephrase Saisa what I've understood. You had an H1 approval earlier um, and then there's a subsequent LCA or even an H1 approval. Does the subsequent approval of LCA or H1 affect the existing H1? The answer is not at all. Okay. So just because okay. a subsequent H1 or LCA, either one, has been approved, has no effect on an existing H1. So no problem. Oh, okay. Okay. So in future, if I want to travel with my current employer, uh, I mean, who am holding my visa and uh, petition, so that should not cause any problem at port of entry, right? Not at all. As long as you are maintaining your H1 status with that employer, there is absolutely no problem. Actually, I am not into US. Yet. See, the, that is uh, a difficult. Apologies. That is a difficult. Not... No, hang on, hang on. That's a difficult problem. Now we are dealing with a totally different issue. Let us split down your situation in in two parts. There is two parts to your situation. You have an H one approval and a visa stamp from one employer. Second employer starts process for another H one. First question was. Does the second approval cause any problem for the first approval? The answer is no problem. Now comes the second part. I have never joined the first employer. I have never worked for them. Now if one year down the line, two years down the line, I want to travel on that H1, is that a problem? Correct? No, no. I have been already employed with the employer, first employer. And I haven't joined second employer. I am still with the employer A only. If you are with employer A, Entering on their H1 is absolutely no problem. That is what you should be doing. Okay, that's what my question is because okay. I haven't quit my employer yet and I'm still on their roles only. You have no problem at all. Travel absolutely free of mind as long as you've been working with them. The fact that another employer got an H1 approved has no effect on you. Okay. All right. In case if suppose in future someone wants to file a H1 transfer, so should they need uh, 
the both the employer petitions or the current employer petition is uh, fit enough the current would be good enough it is good to have both but the current would be good enough thanks raju just clears my doubt good luck sai thank you okay um we have uh, still we have five more questions so i will go on um people who have just logged in um after i started talking uh, but not the people who already have pressed star 5 if you press star 5 again your hand will go down so if anybody has new questions you can press star 5 okay any questions at all press star 5 but those who have already pressed it before don't do it again your hand will go down okay one more question has added on so six more questions left all right let's start with uh, i'm going in the order people called into the conference call so let's go to new york new york usa um go ahead please new york hi uh, my name is ruth um i'm actually from singapore and i got married recently um in september i'm currently here in new york and i I'm sorry I lost you Ruth. Hello Ruth. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, so you got married. You're on H4. I got that much. Okay, I got married, but I'm I'm in New York at the moment um on a tourist visa because I'm from Singapore. Okay. Um I'm on a visa waiver program so sure. um if, As, sure I understand. If, if we, Yeah, ninety days. So um, I just applied for the uh, for my green card, the I one thirty, um, in April, and I got the I seven nine seven letter from them, um, in April on April twenty nine. You're gonna have to speak up a little bit, Ruth. Speak up. Give me that Singapore okay. voice. Ruth. I beg your pardon. I can yes. barely hear you. Speak up. I said, give me that Singapore voice. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, you got your I seven nine seven I one thirty approval. Okay. Yeah, I got the I seven nine seven on twenty ninth of April, um, and I, I my ninety days are up uh, on July the fourteenth. So the question is, should I be applying for the I four eight five anytime soon, or should I um, wait till I get a notice of action? Well, from um, hang on one second. Are you married to a US citizen or an H1 holder? Um I'm married to a US citizen. Um I uh, have come in here um in December and then I left back for Singapore and I'm back here in April again. So I have till July to be here for, for my 90 days. Ruth um, Ruth hang and on. I had Ruth yes. this is this is not an easy question question to answer. The biggest problem okay. is if USCIS believes that you entered usa using visa waiver whereas your intention was to convert to green card they will consider this to be fraud okay i see okay. and we actually have a case like that if you go to immigration.com and you look at the cases from our files you look at the cases from our files um in uh-huh. fact uh, let me bring you there i am i'm actually recording the screen So I'm going to immigration.com, and you go to if you go to our uh, cases from our files. Number uh-huh. two case, number two case is adjustment of status form I-130, form I-485, ESTA fraud misrepresentation. So look at the number two case. That is your case. Okay. Once you have reviewed it. I would want you to consult a lawyer before you make any decisions. Okay. Okay. I am concerned that this might not become a big problem for you, uh, unnecessarily creating issues where there should not be any issues. Okay. I I, okay. I want you to read. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a husband of Ruth. Uh, I'm the one who applied for I-130. The my question is, uh, is it safe to uh, adjust her status back in Singapore, or uh, yeah, we can uh, uh, once she 
come back why because she's going back on july and she uh, she will come back after a few months look can we apply for the uh, for 485 or not i don't like the idea of applying for 485 with a preconceived intention that's the qu- a question i just answered so i want you to read that okay. case before you you can you welcome okay. to come back and talk to me again in this conference but read that case okay that will give you a very good okay. idea of what the problem is okay okay um and we and the charge, last, we, charge and the last, we had to charge a lot of money to correct this problem from somebody else okay let's not get you into that situation read this you still have questions come back here or make an appointment and do a one on one consultation about your case with a lawyer because this is not something you want to decide um uh you know with just a 2 minute consultation okay ah uh, okay sir good luck to you good luck. okay uh we have four more questions left to answer let's go to uh texas texas go ahead please texas Uh, uh rajiv ji uh, this is arjun ji i have i have a question regarding uh, the green card uh, i45 party date okay my party date is uh, june 25 i uh, 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 based on the predictions by the chief of the immigrant visa control unit they said that in august bulletin the party date for eb2 can move till january 2008 but minus uh, june 25 2008 so it's let's it's six months later and i'm i'm a, i'm a little worried because i've been waiting for my green card for, for a long time and uh, and i have to do my green card two times because i was looking for an employer in dallas and they did my form and i140 then i got transferred to houston they did read it read it my form and i140 so what what do you think that my chances of uh the dates getting moved before the fiscal year ends the fiscal year for ucs ends by september arjun so ji my chance of getting Ar- arjun ji i would have to be an astrologer to give give you that answer nobody can tell you what the chances of priority date movements are your guess is probably as good as mine so i really cannot answer that question okay okay so i'll i'll leave it to the bulletin let's say my date becomes current and i have submitted all my documents uh, uh ucs medical documents and all the documents to my company so if they all my uh i45 assessments my party date becomes current based on my research for past 8 years the date becomes current and it will recover in within a couple of months so what are the steps i can take uh that are that i can get my green card before it it recovers within 3 months after being current you really cannot do much about that let me let me tell you how it works okay first of all the visa bulletin is a prediction of the following month or or it's an announcement of the following month so in june they announce the numbers that will become current in july you have to file all through the month of july any day in july you are clear so far yeah okay of course the earlier you file the better your chances of approval because for all you know in july they could say august onwards the priority dates are going back again okay if the dates go back again there are two things that can happen actually three but let's take the two first the easy ones first let's say in july your priority date was current august it went back again government will do one of the two things they'll put the file back and not deal with it until the priority date becomes current again or they can pre adjudicate the case that means the case has been reviewed everything is all set <clears throat> when the time comes priority date has become current again they'll be able to issue you a green card rather quickly okay but there's another possibility 
Okay. If you're really lucky, the case is already pre-adjudicated or your case is exceptionally clear, government approves it in the month of July and applies for, that is the next step. Once they approve the case, they have to apply for a green mm. card visa. It's called an immigrant visa from mm. the State Department. Mm. That is done mm. through a fax or through an email. Mm. So let's say in July on mm. July 25th, they applied for your mm. immigrant visa and the immigrant visa came mm. to them on August 5th. Okay. Mm. So even though the priority dates have slipped back in August, because they've got your immigrant visa, they'll approve the case. Mm. Mm. That's how it works. But there is nothing you can do to make sure that you get adjudicated within that same month. Okay. Okay. So let's so the same example. So my my I forty eighty five was applied July first, then the date was current. But my I forty five was approved on July August fifth. My date was not current. So you, you you saying that I, I would still get my green card or you will not get your green card. Office. You will not get your green card because that's that's what pre adjudication is. They'll pre adjudicate the case and keep it. They cannot issue okay. you a green card because they don't have an immigrant visa. Okay. Okay. Clear. Okay. I got it. So yeah, so, yeah, I got it. So the, the same, the same, the same thing I talked. So as soon as you apply, maybe my company can process the documents because I will know my uh, July priority date by the first week of June, right? So I, I can ask my company to process the I forty five within first week of July. That's what I would recommend. I, do it as early as possible. That's all you can do. Sir, I have to take other questions. Do you have anything else? Yeah, one more thing. So even if my priority date uh, retrograde, I would get my uh, this one, the EAD and advance payroll within three oh, months. Oh yeah, right? yeah. Once you file 485 within timely, uh, within the time provided, you will definitely get your employment authorization and advance parole. Yeah, even if the priority date slip back, no problem. Okay. Okay. Good luck. I, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, no, well, I have I to go. I'm laugh. sorry. I'll come <laughs> back to you, but let me give you other, other questions first. I can't, I can't spend so much time. Oh, okay, thank you. All right. Sit tight. I'll oh, get back. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, okay, folks, I have three more questions after this one. Once again, I remind you, you have to press star five to ask questions, but people who already have pressed it once, don't press it again. Otherwise, you will get out of the queue. So people who have not yet pressed star five, if you have new questions, press star five. Arjun, I have you on hold, okay? I will come back to you if I have time towards the end of the call. Now, let me go on to the, uh, well, we have one, one or two more questions added to the queue. So let me go in the order that we received the questions. Um, Virginia, did you raise your hand again? Virginia? Yes, uh, Raju sir. I, uh, I, I wanted to ask one more question. Um, my place of birth, uh, I'm from India, and uh, my husband's place of birth is uh, Bahrain, but he is he, an Indian nationality. So I wanted to know, can I use his uh, place of birth? And yes, his, you uh, can. Yes, you can. It is not the nationality that matters for green card. It is the country of birth that matters. Okay, because my employer's attorney, they say it's complicated and it's not possible to Your do employer's it. attorney uh, does not know about this law. Tell them to read up on it. Cross chargeability. Nothing complicated about it. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Good Thank you. you. Thank you. You're sir. welcome. Um, let's go to... Uh, let's see. Illinois. Illinois, go ahead, please. Hi, Raji, sir. Uh, this is Krishpu from Chicago. Uh, I came in U.S. like on H-4 visa earlier. Then I converted to F-1 and I did my master's. Okay. And then I got like, I, I am currently I'm on my OPT. I found an employer like, like it's a big employer and they also agreed to file for H-1B for me. But unfortunately, after all this fight, I have so far I have still not received any confirmation from the USCIS. So, does that mean that I have not been selected? That's what like it, my it, my EAD 
already expired. So like I have stopped working since last week because it expired on 5 20th. So hang immigration on, specialist on, department on, like Kushbu. Yeah. Kushbu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. First of all, to answer your first question, if you have not received anything positive, mm -hmm. like a receipt from the government, mm -hmm. are you now out of luck for this lottery? It looks like it. Okay. I cannot say for sure, mm -hmm. but chances are extremely mm -hmm. high that you are not in the lottery. Okay. Now, hang on, I'm not mm -hmm. done. I have a very important question to ask you. Um, mm -hmm. You said you were on OPT, right? Yes. When did your OPT expire? 20th May. Okay. You have permission to continue working until October 1st or until your rejection comes. You don't See, have to... that's what... Oh, my God. Yeah, that's what I have working. keep on asking my lawyer. And he is like, okay, no, you you cannot work after 520. Okay. That was I, so I am, frustrating I'm for me. I'm very sad that so many lawyers are practicing law even without basic knowledge of laws. This is called cap yeah. gap extension. This is called cap gap extension. Cap gap extension, yeah. Read up on it. Educate your lawyer. Go back to work. Okay. Yeah. So they have like my empl my business group loves me a lot. So they have put me on unpaid leave so far. So no. my question, like, also like there is one more confusion. Like they want also like I told them about the H four EAD thing, and my husband is in like fits in that quota. He's beyond the six years of H uh, one, and he also has I one forty approved. So if I will convert to H four, I and if everything goes well, I may get work permit like EAD card. Yes. So they are saying that, okay, we will wait for you. If something happens, then you join. But my question is, if not, they are asking me that if you can join back on, like, if you can work out anything like CPT or anything and come back and join us again by July or August. I so I'm so confused. I, if I will change to, first like, of all, CPT, me, then I will lose on. my edge for Sorry, on. yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's what you do. Yes. First of all, you go back to work because of your cap cap extension what you have to do is you have to go to your school and get them to issue you a, a, a cap gap i20 and take that to take that to the employer and put you back on the payroll number one okay so i went to my school Rajiv sir they are saying they are saying that nothing has been shown in your like service system that means you are not been selected and if they have not updated in on your record in the service system we cannot issue a new I-120. Like, you should have the H-1B approval notice. So my confusion, I was like, I don't know whom to contact. I also called the USCIS to know about it. Why and I you, made my HR to call them. Why don't you call the SEVIP people? Do you think they will help me? I don't I, know. Like, this is an interesting I'm just issue. so frustrated. This is an interesting issue. Yeah. It hasn't come up before. Um, I think it's worth mm -hmm. looking into it a little bit further because if you look at the regulation, it merely says if your OPT expires, excuse me, <coughs> mm -hmm. if your OPT expires after April 1st and you have filed an yes. H1 in a timely manner, you can continue working till October yes. 1st or until the decision is made on the case um, in case you are denied. Um, but it doesn't talk about not being selected in the lottery as far as I know. Interesting issue to look into. Um, see, people who are getting paid to do your case mm -hmm. should be looking into it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Much, much though, it, much though I would like to give as much of time, uh, my time as I can, I cannot spend hours upon hours researching everybody's issues. If I know the answer, yeah, definitely. Of my head, yeah, yeah. you know, I can answer uh, whatever I know from my knowledge, I can answer. But I don't know what to do in your case. I would want your lawyers to look into it. Let's put it that way. You should call but SEVIP. There is, call SEVIP and ask But them, you believe that I should just fight a little more to oh, find absolutely. out more, right? Fight it a lot more. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And so just, just one more question. Do you think, like, uh, what, what are your thoughts about the H4 EAT thing coming up in July? Well, because July, they say, like, on 5-12. It's, it's not going to hang, hang on. It's not going to start in July. July is no. when the notice and comment period ends. After that, the government will yes. take some time to um, consider those comments, frame responses to those comments, 
and then they will give the regulation. How long? Who knows? Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. All right. Well, all I right. Oh, well, I was in a hope that something will work out. Good luck. Good luck, Kushbu. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Okay. Uh, we have uh, three more people who had raised your hands. Let's go to Phoenix, Arizona. Go ahead, please. Uh, hi. Um, this is Chandra calling from Phoenix. Yes, sir. Hi, sir. Uh, I have uh, um, a question actually. Uh, this is I'm debating uh, between K3 visa and DS1 uh, returning resident. Uh, my little background of my case is uh, um, I, I, I got the green, I mean, I am a U.S. citizen now. Um, right before uh, I became a U.S. citizen, I moved back to India with my, with my family. And uh, uh, I mean, after uh, a couple of months, I, I alone came back and I got my citizenship in uh, 2010. And um, in between, my wife visited here and uh, with a green card. And uh, we got the, uh, uh, this um, advanced not uh, parole. Um, uh, the re-entry permit also, but uh, that permit also got expired uh, in uh, 2011, September. Um, now the problem is, um, now my family is right now in India, I had to bring them uh, here uh, before the school year starts. Uh, uh, for that, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I heard from some, you know, some forum or something and uh, I applied 130 and uh, then uh, 129F also I filed in uh, February. Um, I, I wasn't sure actually is it the right approach or do I, uh, you know, should I go for DS1, that is a returning resident. Okay, uh, let's, just, you know. let's, just, let's just look at the big view of your case. There is no yes. doubt that your wife is going to come here. There is no doubt yes. about that. The only question is when. Okay. I don't care what approach you take. Whether you take the K3 approach, whether you, um, uh, you know, try to argue with the government based upon a returning resident permit, it can all take time. But time-wise, returning resident permit is a lot faster, I think. Okay. Okay. So, and, and, yeah, and you can ask the government... Uh, you can ask the consulate to consider her for a returning resident permit. See if they are willing to give her that. Okay, um, It's very unlikely, uh, unless you have a good reason, that they will agree simply to give it back. But you never know. Especially, uh, your yes. children are U.S. citizens too, right? Yes, yes, that's correct. Especially when you have a husband who is a U.S. citizen, kids who are U.S. citizens, and U.S. citizens' interest would be harmed if they are not allowed to come to USA for the school year. Worth a try. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Um, like, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, she still has a valid green card, but she cannot travel, right? Uh, straight, uh, you know, still it, it has valid valid date. Uh, you know what is going to happen? If she tries to travel, the airline will not issue her a ticket. Oh, really? The airline is not supposed to issue you a ticket if your green card has expired. No, no, it's not expired. It's, sorry, no, no, it's no, no, not no. expired. It it's is not, valid. Hang, until... hang on, hang on, hang on. By expired, I don't mean the date of it has expired. If you have been outside USA for more than one year uh, without a re-entry permit, or if your re-entry permit has expired, they will not issue a ticket. Oh, okay. Because if they issue a ticket, they'll be fined by the government. Oh, okay. Okay? Okay. So what you should do oh. is you should, I mean, you can try. This is my understanding. I think SB1 returning resident permit is the best way to go in addition to what you're already doing. Yeah. Yeah, because I worked in India for three years, last three years, and I came here in October. So I probably, you know, I, I can, you know, I, I don't know if I can put like, uh, this is the reason is beyond her control and she has to stay back uh, in India uh, for, the, for the reason beyond her control. That, that, you know, uh, another, I, thing, another thing you should look into is called, Google this, expeditious naturalization. 
expeditious naturalization. Okay. If an American employer posts you back in India, um, that might be something, your wife might be able to qualify for citizenship. I don't know. An interesting angle. But I think SB1 is definitely something you should do and you should also look into expedited naturalization. I'm not sure it'll work, but look into it. Okay? Let me take my next call. Thank you. Thank you, Raji. Thanks You're for welcome. Speaking. Good luck. Okay, f uh, four more questions. Some more people have come in. Okay, Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines, Iowa. Hey, uh, hey Raju. Uh, this is Ram. Uh, I have a question regarding my EV3, con EV3 to EV2 conversion. Okay. Uh, basically, my sh uh, same employer is trying to do that, uh, trying to file under EV2 again with using my newly earned master's degree. Okay. And now the question is, uh, some of the partial payment, like you know, forty percent of my master's degree has been paid, has been reimbursed by my employer. So the question is, can I use, can, uh, can my employer use his uh, file able to using my master's degree since he, he okay. reimbursed? Okay, let, uh, let me see, Ram. Part. Let me see if I understood your situation. You have an okay. EB three I one forty approved from an employer, correct? Yes, correct. While you were working for them, you got your master's degree, correct? Correct. Now you want to do an EB2 with the same employer. Can they do it? And the answer is yes, but only if they offer you a job that is more than 50% different from the job you were doing um, when you obtained it. Well, hang on. Hang on. Let me take a step back. No. Okay. Only if they offer you a job which is different from your EB3 job, and the new job requires a master's degree. Okay? Oh, yes. So yes. They can do that. Okay. Are you okay? You understood? Yes. Yes, yes uh, I understood. And uh, let, me, let me tell you this as well. Uh, this, is, uh, this is going to be a new job of a uh, future job, which has been offered to me. Yes, it can this be a future a job. job. It can be a future job, yeah. that is not a problem. Yeah, uh, it's a completely a future job and a different job. So question is, uh, my employer can claim the experience what I gain with him because since it's a new job. Okay, now that's a different question. question. Hang, on. Hang, hang on, hang on. That's a different question. Yeah. So now the question is, can my employer use the experience that I have gained while working for them as a requirement for the second green card? And the answer is yes. If the job being offered okay. in the green card is more than 50% different than the job that you were doing for them so far. Okay. Okay, so let's say okay. you were a developer um, for three years for this company and now they are offering you a job as a project manager. Okay, mm -hmm. one example. Okay. Um, let me let me take my next call. Okay, good luck. No, uh, I actually my question is not that. Where are you one second? Uh, hello. Yeah, I'm trying to see. You have to wrap it up quickly. There's a bunch of people waiting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basic. Uh, basically, my question is not about my experience. My question is about my master's degree, which is earned uh, through my employer because my employer. I already has, uh, answered that. I, I already answered that question. That if you get a master's degree. While you're working for your employer, mm -hmm. you can use it if the job requires a mm -hmm. master's degree. Did your employer pay for your master's degree? Yeah, he paid for like you know, 50% of that amount. But uh, I, I went through, recently I went through the forums and all, and the people were saying that uh, if the degree has been sponsored by yeah, employer. That becomes, that, becomes, that becomes problematic. I don't remember the law off the top of my head. But if the employer has paid for it, okay. there is a little wrinkle there. I don't remember. We've dealt with this issue before, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Okay? Sorry, oh, I, I can't answer your question. Okay. All right. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, another person from Arizona, USA. Arizona, USA. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Hi. This is Ashwini here. 
My perm has been filed uh, by a New Jersey-based employer, and I'm working for a client who is working in, uh, I mean, in Tennessee. I'm looking to change the client. So, but my employer says if I change my client now, as my perm is being filed, they say my LCA and perm gets invalidated. Is that true? And how can I work with it? That is very odd. Um, that okay. labor cert, if it was drafted by a lawyer, was either drafted in ignorance of the law, which is very strange, or based upon information that was incorrectly given. Look, here is how it works. For jobs that are transferable, the labor cert should always okay. be filed from the corporate headquarters. Mm -hmm. So you, because you could be working in Arizona today, Des Moines, Iowa tomorrow, Washington DC day after tomorrow. If we were to follow the yes. classical path, we would have to file a new green card every time you move. It will never get done. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is Department of Labor has agreed to consider the headquarter to be the place for jobs that are subject to relocation. So that's where it should be filed. Okay. If it was filed like that, mm -hmm. which is the way it should have been filed, mm -hmm. there doesn't there it should not mm -hmm. be any problem at all where you are moving. Mm-hmm. But now, my employer says the perm has been filed wherein my employer address is being given. Like my current employer address in Tennessee has been given. So, so they are, they, that, that matter? Was, that was done incorrectly. That is not the correct way of doing the green card. Okay, so uh, the headquarters wherein my employer is from New Jersey, that is, that is where he's going to uh, file my perm for. That's where it should have been filed, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, is there a restriction like even though if I uh, change my client, there's a 25 mile limit wherein I will have to work for work, work somewhere uh, in the address? All I can tell you is this is a very messed up filing. There are too many holes in this. I don't have time to go over everything. The case should have been filed from from oh. New Jersey. File your case from New Jersey. Okay. 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 Sure. Thank when was so this much. When was this perm filed, Ashwini? March. It's not too much time. Start all over again. File mm -hmm. it from New Jersey. Forget about this one. Okay, sure. Thank okay? you. That way you'll be free to move wherever you want. Okay, sure. Yeah, right. thank good, you. Good luck. Okay, guys. Um, any new questions except Arjun? Press star five on your phone oh one more is already there sorry i forgot that one so okay so we have three new questions plus arjun okay i don't know if i'm going to get to you arjun we are running short of time but i'll do my best let's uh, go to another person from phoenix arizona Phoenix. Okay, I'll leave that open. Let's go to Bloomfield, New Jersey. New Jersey. Hello, Rajiv sir. Hello, sir. Um, my name is Ramakrishna, and uh, I have one I one forty approved from my uh, company A. Yes. And I moved to company B. My company B has filed my H1 three years back and uh, perm. So my H1 is uh, for the got I got for three years. Okay. Then my I140 uh, perm is approved now. I140 is applied. Suppose my this I140 will deny, it will affect to my H1. No. Which is uh, no. for extension is already applied. No, no. Uh, hang on. Let me let me get a couple of things straight. <clears throat> the old yes, old I one forty, did the old employer revoke that I one forty? No, sir. They have not revoked. Okay. So any extensions you do on the H one can continue on that old I one forty. Okay. And after get uh, and here, suppose I will get the I one forty approval in my new employee. At the time of filing four eighty five, can I file with? Uh, um, uh, my A company or I have to file with B company only after getting I-140 from B company also. If you get I-140 approved from company B, 
and you want to continue yes, working with company B, you will file your green card through company B, but you will use the priority date of the employer A. Oh, okay. I cannot, uh, I cannot use that company A for filing. Because company A is ready to file your 485 also. Then you can. If, if company A is ready to offer you the same job and you are willing to take that same job, you can file for oh, I, have file. To, I have to accept that job of company A. You have to have the the intention, the good faith intention to join them upon approval or before yes. approval of the green card. <coughs> Thank you, sir. I really appreciate. You're yeah, welcome. I have released my lot of. You're welcome. But one more thing, I want to tell you. Here is another, another very weird sir. thing. Give me one second. I'm actually losing my voice. Sir. <coughs> This is very important for people to remember. Oh, there are more people. Yes, sir. Four more people have raised their hands. I'll do my best, guys. <clears throat> what happens is, here's the interesting thing. So, yes, you sir. file, you're working for employer B. You file your green yeah. card based upon I-140 approval of employer A, based upon good yes. faith intention to join them. But you're still working for employer B or C or D, we don't care. Right. After 180 days of 485 pending, you actually do not have to join employer A, you can join anybody. Okay. So, in, at, Nobody the, might... at the time Sorry. you file 485, you should have good faith intention to join the employer A, but once 180 days have been pend, have, have gone, you can use AC21 to join any employer, you never have to join A again. In point in my case, I have not filed. My this my priority date has not come so far. I thought I'll just add this piece of information for you. Okay. Okay, sir. Good luck. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, sir. Okay. Um. Let us see. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Did you have anything, Phoenix, Arizona? Hi. Uh Hi sir, um, I have a question about my H-1B. My previous employer when I was working in 2004 had filed my H-1B. Uh, when I left that employer, it, uh, my visa got stamped saying that cancelled without prejudice. It's been more than six years. So can I use that petition to uh, file for my H-1B without going through the cap? No, because if your H-1B was approved earlier than six years ago, I don't see how we can use that. Okay, because uh, one of the lawyers uh, I had spoken to, he was saying it can be done. So I just wanted to check whether that be a proper way or... Uh... Sure, get it in writing and then go ahead and do it. That way, if they can't get it done, at least you can ask for a refund of your money. Okay, sure. Okay. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the last two questions, guys. Um, so let's go to Virginia. Virginia, go ahead, please. Uh, hi, Rajiv, sir. Uh, I have uh, filed my H1 last year, uh, and uh, it was rejected because of employer-employee relationship. Okay. And uh, I joined the college and I took CPT and I com continued working and I changed my employer and the client and I applied this year and this year it was selected in the lottery and I got approved for three years also. Okay. So uh, I am wondering if I have to complete my uh, master's like the CPT, like will it be a problem if I discontinue? When, uh, did, you, when, did, you, when, when did you join your CPT ma'am? Uh, I joined CPT last uh, September. I'm sorry, that is, a, that is a poor question. It means I'm getting tired. <laughs> uh, my question is, when did you join school based upon which you got the CPT? That was last September. My, uh, my H1 was rejected in July. I had OPT till September, so I joined my college in September. September of 2013, right? Okay. And you attended all your classes? You did not skip any classes? Yes. 
I don't think no, I did I, not. I don't think you have to continue school. I think you can quit. But uh, at least I have to continue till this October because my hedge fund starts only this October, right? So if I want to con work yes, till this you, you October, have to. then you I have to maintain status till October, of course. Okay. Okay. So other than that, if I discontinue while stamping, that wouldn't be a problem. I don't see any issue there. Okay. Thank you. Good luck, ma'am. Okay. Last question of the day, folks. Um, let's go to the delightful Cleveland, Ohio. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. So, uh, this is regarding an issue which you have helped with us a lot. So, I'm a previous Tri Valley student, all right? So, I was in, I think is I was in a state university. I was in Tri Valley for a couple of months. Then I moved back to state university. So, when I applied for OPT, they had a query on Tri Valley. So, instead of replying to that query, I went back to India and came back on the previous visa again and I did my second master's in State University again. Now I'm planning to do a PhD and I'm fully funded by my professor including the tuition and stipend but I have to go to India. <coughs> my visa has already expired so I guess I need to go to Stamping again. So uh, will it be a strong case for F1 or will they reject it saying, uh, reject it saying like, hey you didn't answer try value so Let's look at let's look at your question your your situation. Okay, <clears throat> okay. so you had a Tri Valley issue when you tried to yeah. change schools. You got an RFE. Is that what it was? No, no, no. I was in State University. I was in Tri Valley for a couple of months. Then I moved back to my State University. So I was in Tri Valley for summer. When did you get your RFE and during what time? I got my RFE in two thousand. Well, when I applied for OPT, they said, "Okay, during in, in, in your PV, in, if you look at your F1 record, you have, you have stayed in Tri Valley for two months, and they're asking me why did you go to Tri Valley? Did you attend classes there and stuff?" Which I did not answer because obviously they were an online university. Okay, then, and I went then, back to India. And okay, and did, did you you went back to India? Did you uh, get a new F1 visa before you came in? No. So you use the same visa. the old F1 visa. Yes, sir. You use the same visa. Okay. This is not a strong case for a visa stamping. Why? Because the government can take the position. I'm not so worried about the RFE stuff. I'm used about. I'm worried about the, the fact that you did not get a new visa. You know what happens, <clears throat> if you have been out of status for even one day. Your visa okay. is, is considered to have been cancelled. Even though you don't see it in your passport, it still looks good to you. Okay. But because you are out of status, okay. it is supposed to be cancelled. So okay. you should have then applied for a student visa and come, and come back at that time. Okay. The fact that you didn't do it, uh, if consulate finds out about it, they will make an issue of it. Now, if you are fortunate, Okay. And they don't find out about it, they may not make an issue of it. Okay. So the fact that I'm fully funded doesn't make any difference here? I don't think so. I'm fully... Okay. All right? Okay. But uh, when I entered the U.S., they gave me a new I-94, and back then people were well, saying, if I, you get a new I-94, I, then you, that's fine. I dealt with the Tri-Valley University situation for a long time. You, I may even have talked with yeah. you. Uh, I mean, there was a yeah. time... We were doing conferences with 600 students at the same time. Okay, so yeah, you are doing every day during that time. Every day we did conferences until we got it all sorted out yeah. as best as we could. So there were three sets of yeah. students in your situation. One, those yeah. who came back with the same visa had no problem. Two, yeah, came back with the same visa at the airport. CBP turned them back. Okay. Yeah and said, go get a visa stamp. And the third mm -hmm. set of people were two subcategories. One subcategory was mm -hmm. arrested. They were placed under arrest. Yeah. Okay. The second subcategory was turned back, but given a five-year bar from re-entering US. Mm -hmm. So I know, you know only okay. your case, I know cases of all kinds of tri University. Yes. Yeah. Therefore, the fact that they did not 
create any problems when you entered simply means you happen to fall in the first subgroup. It doesn't mean everything is all clear. Okay. Now, if you were to get a green card on H1, it will not be an issue. But for F1, it is going to be an issue, I think, if they find out. Okay. All right? Okay. Good All luck right. to you. Uh, because usually people were saying, like, if you are fully funded, they might take a lenient view. You want to hear something, something really bad? I know somebody who was fully funded, who had no problem, Yeah. called me from India. Mm -hmm. He had mm -hmm. completed four years of his PhD. His student visa was okay. denied. Student visa was denied. Can you believe that? Oh. oh, that's really bad. And we could do nothing for him. Yeah. Okay. So no, don't don't listen to what okay. people say. Come back and talk to me if you have any questions. All right, sir. All right. Uh, thank you for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Arjun, let me take your question. Last question. So. Arjun, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Rajiv. This is regarding the uh, comprehensive immigration reform. I know it's not implemented. Uh, I'm sorry, Arjun. Arjun, start again. I, I can't understand or hear you. Speak up louder, get closer to the phone. What are you saying? Hello, Arjun? Uh, uh, Rajiv, this is, uh, Rajiv, this is regarding uh, comprehensive immigration forum. This one? Yes. This, yes. Okay, so... If, if if the comprehensive immigration reform gets implemented sometime this year, and while my green card is being processed using the normal procedure, uh, I, I have a U.S. STEM degree. Uh, will I will I have to do will I have to do a new process for comprehensive immigration reform, or how does it work? Because okay. I want to use so, whichever is so, so your different. question is your question is. If immigration reform gets passed this year, people like you who are already in the green card process but have American STEM degrees, would they get any advantage? Is that your question? Yes. And the answer is we don't know. It all depends how, when, what shape and form the law gets passed. That question cannot be answered because we don't know what the future holds. Okay, okay. But, I got it. So the tip, but, it's too... but okay. if the law gets passed sort of along the same lines as the Senate bill did, then you could get tremendous advantage, uh, not only because you would have a STEM degree, but because they would take away the per, per, per country quota. If they take away the per country quota, I suspect... Indian EB2 would become current. That would be my guess. Okay. All right. I got to go, Arjun. Okay. And, uh, okay. Thank you. Good luck to you. Guys, I'll talk to you again in two weeks. Uh, thank you all for being here. I really enjoy talking to you, and I thank you for the opportunity to talk with you. Bye-bye. Every other Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we host um, free community conference calls. Everybody is welcome to join. Some people post questions ahead of time. You can take membership in our forums. Uh, all of the details are there on our website, immigration.com. You can take membership uh, ahead of time. And, um, you know, it's instantaneous. It happens right away. And post your questions beforehand. Or you can just log in. Uh, the phone number in all are provided, 202 800 8394 1230 Eastern Standard Time every other Thursday. We have uh, free apps for both Apple iOS platform for your iPhones and iPads as well as for Android. Just look for immigration.com immigration.com the period dot and uh, the application should show up.